notions. Today we're going to make this home sweet home table topper that I believe it measures 39 and a half by 39 and a half. And we're going to be using our Creative Notions subscription bag from March 2021. So you will need your fabric and your pattern, your um, denim letters that are included, your rotary cutter, your seam ripper if you're like me, snips, sewing machine, all of those things, your cute little three and a half inch Creative Notions ruler, and you'll need some sort of a rotating mat just for safety if you have one. I have a Martelli and it works wonderful for me. You'll need your ironing board and then hot iron because that's always important and your planner so that you can record what you're doing and um, also I found it easy to mark my, um, my pieces and I'll show you what I mean. Um, also, to attach these letters right here, these don't come pre-adhesive attached, so you're going to need either some glue, and you can just use regular school glue, you can use a glue stick, you can use some heat and bond light, yeah, or whatever you have. So I'll explain several ways that we can attach these words right here. Um, you'll need your chambray for your backing and your binding and I think I'm ready to get started. I've got my pieces cut out but I will show you what I did because there's a couple little tricks I'd like you to know before we start. So gather your things together and let's make this really cute table topper. I've gone ahead and cut out my pieces just like, well, not exactly like, but pretty close to what the pattern had called for. Now this is my pattern, and we give you eight fat quarters to choose from, and we coordinate all of these fat quarters with the pieces on the pattern, as you can see. One of these fat quarters, this one right here, the color is off on it, so instead of using this fat quarter, I just took it out and I use, I used, instead of make, cutting eight from this one, I cut an extra eight out of the dark. And when we look at this pattern, you'll see that there's dark corners on each of the corners. And so that's why I decided to do that to make the corners stand out like the pattern did. Now on the original, or on the one that I made first, and I'll show you, I went ahead and used the extra fabric that I had, but it doesn't really make this corner stand out like this one right here does. So I want to go ahead, I'm just going to change it up just a little bit. You have plenty of fabric in your bundle, so it won't be a problem to do that. I'll move this out of the way. So what I've done, and I did, when I put these in my planner, I went ahead and numbered them. I numbered each one of these blues because they are similar enough but when you really stand back and look at the table topper, most of these blend in. So it's not going to be very difficult. I mean, it's really not going to stand out. The ones you want to stand out are these stars right here, these stars. So these are the, the most important. So be sure to um, cut those out just the way that they are outlined in the pattern. And then this square right here, which is a nine and a half inch square, it's just out of this light gray with the blue threading through it. So um, you can cut that out and set that aside. And that's what I've done. So here is my center. And I will show you in a few minutes how to go ahead and apply those words to that. And then I numbered everything here. I went with one and two, they go together, and then three and four go together, 
and then five, six, and seven, and then I omitted number eight. So I have an extra fat quarter to use for whatever I want. You don't have to do it that way. You can go ahead and cut eight fat quarters out of the extra fabric, and that is just fine. And that's what I did on this, this one, and it worked out just beautiful. But for this topper, I wanted to give you that option. So um, I'm going to set my three and a half inch squares aside. And I've labeled them with our fabric stickers so that we could, I could um, keep track of which one was which. And then I, this is one, this is two, and together this is one, two, because we're going to be making half square triangles. And these two together are three, four. So I'll show you how to make these triangles I'm sorry, these um, half square triangles. And then we're going to, I'll go ahead and set everything else up on the design board and we will go from there. To make your half square triangle units, you'll take one and two and put them together with right sides together. And that's what I've done here. And then take your ruler and draw a diagonal line from bottom corner to top corner. And you can use any pin you want because you're gonna be cutting through this and it won't really matter. And then turn your, don't turn your fabric, but turn your ruler and do the same thing right across, corner to corner. And now you're going to sew a quarter of an inch on each side of both lines. So all the way down and then back and then from this corner and then back. And I'll do that and then we'll cut it. I'll show you how to cut it. Now it's, okay, I've sewn on both sides of the line. And then if you get confused about this at all, in our planner right in the front, it talks about half square triangles. I'm trying to find the angle so you can see it. And right here, we're gonna cut eight triangles, or eight half square triangles at a time. So it shows you to put the right sides together, draw your lines, sew on both sides, and then the way we cut it, it will be, we'll cut in between the lines, plus we'll cut right through the center and right through the center again. So this is a really useful tool. This tells you how to make eight half square triangles, four per time, two per time, and then how to do a strip unit to make half square triangles. So I'm going to take my ruler and cut right on the line, but I'm not going to move my fabric at all. Now I'm going to cut straight across. These will be generously sized, so you'll be able to cut them down to the size that you need. Okay, and there you have eight half square triangle units, like that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of them and press them and then we'll, um, I'll show you how to trim them down. If you turn on your triangles over so that the dark side is facing up, then when you press it open like this, then the dark will go toward the dark and it won't show through your light colored fabric. So that's why I always turn them over like this. Okay, now we'll trim down our half square triangle unit. That one looks a little bit wonky, so um, take your three and a half inch ruler, square up ruler, and put it right along the seam line, this little line that goes right across the seam line. And then trim one side, then the, 
than the other. Hopefully it won't slip like mine. And then turn your mat and just trim up the other two sides if there's anything there at all. And it's usually just a sliver, so not much at all. And then do that to the rest of your half square triangles and we'll put everything together. I've cut all my squares and made the half square triangles and then I just looked at my pattern and the diagram on the inside and laid the pattern out just like it is. Now I've still got the numbers on here and it really helped me to have the numbers this time especially because I was able to look at them and see which color is number one and which color is number six and which half square triangle unit is one two and which half square triangle unit is three four and so you can see that the star is going around in the circle there's a dark one and so uh, something that really helped me was I took a picture with my cell phone and then I looked at that picture to see if any of the blocks were out of place and I did find two or three that were out of place so, so it's helpful to go ahead and look at that and just take a picture of it and it, it really helps. So I've started sewing these together and I'm going to continue doing that and then and then we'll piece this one together. Um, but right now I wanted to show you how to make the home sweet home in the middle. So I'm just gonna adjust the camera and do that. This is the little bit of waste I had left from trimming off my half square triangles. Not very much. Okay, here's my home sweet home. And there's different ways that you can attach this. And I've chosen to go ahead and put them on the block before I finish the quilt. Um, I wanted to show you a few products that will work. This is a no soap adhesive. It's, it doesn't have a paper backing on it. You just peel it off and I'll just open this. I, it's kind of like stitch witchery if you've ever heard of that. It has a really kind of a different texture. It's not rough or anything, but you can cut if I can get the tape off my fingernail here. You can just cut little pieces of it and then cut that piece in half if you want to and then just stick them right underneath the H. Now you don't want to get this on your iron at all because it will stick to your iron and you'll have a gooey mess. And actually, this needs to be on the ironing surface. So I'm just gonna slide that over there. You don't wanna iron on your cutting boards. So I've laid this out so that there's a good half inch all the way around. Another product you can use is a um, fusible web that is, it's like tape that goes, I like zipper tape, if you've ever heard of zipper tape. And it does have a plastic backing and you just put it on and it tears off and then you pull the, the paper backing off and then put it on and adhere it with your iron. And this is the most simple way to do it. It's just some glue that or you could even use a use um, a glue stick if you wanted to. This is icky. Okay. So just put a dot of glue. Not you don't need that much, just a teeny bit. And then just like that, when you press it with your iron. the glue and I'll show you it's pretty well stuck down and it'll stick down long enough for you to sew it you can either do a blanket stitch around it but what I did on this quilt I just laid it on the sewing machine I did it on the long arm actually and what I did was just laid it on there 
and just stitched around the edges just a straight stitch with dark blue thread and that's what it looks like not too bad I think it worked okay so you can do that too that's pretty easy so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish sticking these letters on and sew it and put it in our in our little quilt as pretty as these fabrics are they're kind of monochromatic so it's really important to stand back and look at everything and make sure you've got everything in the right order so now I just need to sew these three together these three together and these three together and then press the seams going in alternate directions and um, I'll do that now and then we'll look at the whole thing I've done all my squares and then just laid them out in the order they're supposed to go and looked at it to, again to make sure that all the stars are going in the right direction and you guys in watching this back I am such a messy quilter I'm so sorry but it's reality TV right so um, I know it's driving some of you crazy it's kind of driving me a little crazy too but this is how I do things and I know some of you can relate to that now all I need to do is sew these, this to this and to this, so I'll sew it together in rows and the same with these rows and these rows and just press your seams in alternate directions. So, so one, two, and three, and then four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine. And then we'll do the corner blocks and I'll show you how to lay those out and sew them. It's all sewn together. Now we're ready to do the points on the, this right here, we're going to do these right, this one and this one, this one and this one, and I'll show you how I laid it out and cut it so that you'll be able to do that really easy. This is how I've laid out my corners, and I'm going to sew this row, then this row, and then sew these together, and then this to this. So I'll do that and show you. I've stacked these all up and now I'm going to cut them but I'm going to do it one at a time just to be extra careful the pattern has you lay your ruler across this section right here and you want to leave a quarter inch actually it'll be a quarter inch on the ends a quarter inch overhang on each end and here and here so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these put that in your scrap pile and this is what you get and I'll show you how we attach those to attach these triangles fold your triangle section in half and just finger press it 
and do the same thing with your table topper and it will be right in the middle of this now do that on each corner I'm sorry on each side and then take your piece and match up the pressed lines and then you're gonna sew a quarter of an inch all the way across Here's our finished table topper. Now these just went on very easily because there's a quarter inch left over on this piece right here. And so it just sewed naturally into place. Now I'm going to just make a quilt sandwich out of it and a really easy way to do it, to quilt your quilt. It's small enough that you can do it on your sewing machine. And I just did cross hatching on mine and it worked out so nicely and then i did a little video on binding and i'll just attach that to the end of this um, and then i do want to show you a couple of errors that i made so that you can know not to do the same thing so i'll adjust the camera now this one as you can see the way it's laid out is this little design is in the center and then the two plane are on the outside and it's very easy to get that confused when you're sewing these together so i will show you what happened on this other one when i picked up my pieces to to sew this part i sewed this to the wrong side and it should have been sewn over here to this side so take care when you're doing that another thing I did to quilt it was just stitch right inside the block itself and that gives it a really nice texture just like that in this kinds of stands kind of stands up and it looks really nice um, and then to to make the center of this star stand out a little I did a little bit more quilting but it looks good right just using a straight stitch looks really good on the home sweet home and I used I just glued this down because I haven't had time to quilt it or to bind it yet but um, I mean sew the binding on and you can do that just as easily just use a little dab of glue and put it on there and give it a press and that that um, dries the glue and then you can just go whenever you have time just go in and and finish quilting it so you can see the quilting on the back pretty well even though i used a dark blue thread doesn't that look kind of neat i think so too Rather than miter at that little junction right there, I just straightened it out and went ahead and quilted straight ahead. And then I did miter the corners, but that makes it really easy to just go where you've got a, an internal corner like that. It's easier just to go ahead and make it straight. helps you make the home sweet home table topper it makes it a little more simple for you 
it's very quick to make I think I made mine in about a half an hour maybe to an hour the trick is just how you lay out your blocks so I hope everything goes well for you and you can get it done really super fast and oh I see oh crap okay so in looking at this quilt behind me I see that I put the top row on upside down. That just frosts my cookies, let me tell you what. This is a good time to use your seam ripper. So, I'll be taking this off and flipping it around. Do you see what I mean? There's three legs of the star here and three legs of a star here and the, the other legs of the star are down here. That's why I tell you, you just need to go back and look at it. You need to stand back and look at it. Even after you sew it, I'll be right back. Okay, it's fixed. I hope you guys don't have as many problems as I've had, but it's just really important to watch where you put your blocks. So lay it out. Like I said, take a picture of it, stand back, look at it, get your husband to look at it, get your dog to look at it. And then remember to do your project sheet. And on the part where it says pressure points, learn to put the rows on right side up. That should help me anyway. What new skill did I learn? I probably learned, well, I learned how to do this triangle right here and leave a quarter inch seam. I learned that I can use chambray for binding and backing and it turned out really good. And photos, I'm gonna take some and just put them in my book. And I'm really gonna work hard on not sewing my rows on upside down. So I hope you guys have better luck than I did and enjoy your new home sweet home table topper. And I hope you enjoy your subscription boxes because we sure enjoy making them for you. So I'll see you again next month where we will be making something super fun from the upcoming line of fabric that I'm not gonna tell you about yet. And we will actually be traveling. So I will be making the video in my camp trailer. And that will be a new and fun thing for me to do too. Hopefully I'll learn to sew the rose right side up. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.